The Sinking of the Titanic by Matt Doden, illustrated by Charles Barnett III and Phil Miller. Chapter 1. A Grand Voyage Begins On April 10, 1912, the giant ocean liner, Titanic, floated in the harbor at Southampton, England. Titanic was the largest ship ever built at that time. It was as long as four city blocks and as tall as a ten-story building. Newspapers reported that Titanic was practically an unsinkable ship. In the event of an accident, the ship had watertight compartments to keep it afloat. People believed that these compartments and other features of the ship made Titanic the safest ship ever built. Captain Edward J. Smith had sailed the seas for more than 20 years. Smith would command Titanic's first trip across the Atlantic Ocean to New York City. Easy now. This is my last voyage as a captain and I want everything to go smoothly. Standing on the bridge, Captain Smith gave the order, and Titanic slowly pulled out of the harbor. Well-wishers lined the dock, waving farewell to the famous ship and its 2,200 passengers and crew. Say hello to New York for us. Safe voyage. First-class passengers traveled in luxury, Millionaires such as Benjamin Guggenheim, Molly Brown, and John Astor danced in sparkling ballrooms, ate in elaborate dining rooms, and slept in beautiful brand new cabins. This ship is a marvel. Fantastic. It ought to be for the price of a ticket. Molly Brown toured Europe and stayed with the Astors before returning to America on Titanic. At home, Molly's husband was a very successful miner. Molly used her money to help people in need. On the lower decks, second-class and third-class passengers explored the ship. Even the lower areas of the ship were impressive. Joseph and Juliette LaRoche sailed with their young family. Like many passengers, Juliette was eager to write letters to family back home. Dear Dad, we boarded the Titanic last evening at seven. The boat set out when we were eating, and we could not believe she was moving. The sea is very smooth. The weather is wonderful. If you could see how big this ship is. The sea is so calm. What a beautiful evening. The great ship made excellent time as it crossed the cold North Atlantic. Passengers walked along Titanic's decks and enjoyed perfect weather. They danced to the ship's band in the ballroom. Titanic's passengers and crew were unaware of the trouble ahead. Throughout the trip, a radio operator sat in the wireless room. He sent and received messages for the ship's passengers. He also received messages from other ships reporting weather conditions. Just past three large icebergs. Heavy ice. A few of the iceberg warnings reached Captain Smith. Some did not. The operator was too busy with other messages. Chapter 2. Collision Shortly before midnight on April 14th, Frederick Fleet and another crew member were on watch duty in Titanic's crow's nest. The water was calm. The ship moved quickly through the cool night. It's so dark tonight. I wish I had binoculars. Fleet suddenly spotted a low, dark shape floating directly in the ship's path. Iceberg! Right ahead! On Titanic's bridge, an officer heard Fleet's warning. He acted quickly. Reverse the engines! Full reverse! Hard to starboard! The huge ship slowly began to turn, but it was going too fast. Why aren't we turning? We're going to hit! Metal tore as the iceberg ripped through the hull. Instantly, thousands of gallons of water poured into the lower areas of the ship. 
In his room, Captain Smith felt a jolt. What's wrong? The engine stopped. He ran to the bridge. What have we struck? An iceberg, sir. We saw it too late to avoid it. Chapter 3. Titanic's Fate is Sealed Minutes later, Thomas Andrews, Titanic's chief designer, toured the lower decks with Captain Smith. How bad is it, Mr. Andrews? Very bad, I'm afraid. The iceberg has ripped many holes. The water's coming in too fast. Titanic cannot survive. How long do we have? An hour and a half, possibly two. Smith hurried back to the bridge to tell his officers. Gentlemen, disaster is upon us. Prepare the lifeboats. What? It can't be. Now hurry. We haven't much time. Fire the signal rockets. Send distress calls. Titanic is going down. The officers directed passengers to the lifeboats. Many passengers still did not believe what was happening. Some chose to stay in their rooms. Titanic's crew tried to keep everyone calm. All up on deck with life-saving jackets on. What's happening? Please go to the lifeboats. Immediately, the radio operator sent distress calls, hoping another ship in the area could help. Half-struck iceberg and sinking. We require immediate assistance. The Californian was only 10 miles away from Titanic. Its radio operator had already gone to sleep. Other crew members noticed flashes of light in the night sky. On board the Californian, an officer woke the captain. Captain, we've spotted signal rockets in the distance. It might be a distress signal. It's probably just fireworks. Don't worry about it. The Carpathia was 58 miles, or about four hours away from Titanic. The radio operator on the Carpathia was still awake and received Titanic's distress call. He quickly sent the message to Captain A.H. Rostron. Captain, Titanic is going down and is requesting help. Go. Go as fast as we can to get there. We'll never make it in time. Wake the crew. Meanwhile, Titanic was sinking fast. Women and children first! Officers started loading passengers onto lifeboats. Titanic had only enough lifeboats for about 1,200 people. In the rush, many lifeboats were lowered with empty spaces. That boat isn't full! You can put more people in there! Stand back now! Wait your turn! Families were split up. As the women and children boarded the boats first, most men waited behind. Some did not realize they would never see their loved ones again. I'll get on the next boat. See you soon. Don't worry. Goodbye. Chapter 4. The End of Titanic The lifeboats were lowered quickly. More than 1,500 people remained on the ship with no hope of being saved. Some jumped into the freezing water. Isidore and Ida Strauss stood on deck and watched the scene. Sir, there's also room for you on this one. We haven't much time. No, not while women and children remain on board. Isidore, we've been living together for many years. And where you go, I go. They decided to stay together on the ship. Captain Smith gathered his crew. Most of the lifeboats were gone. It's every man for himself now. You're released of duty. What will you do, Captain? I will stay with my ship. Now save yourselves. As Titanic's deck slanted, the ship's band continued to play to keep everyone calm. We have a job, friends. I intend to go down doing it. At 2.17 in the morning, Titanic's stern raised out of the water. Its giant propellers hung in the air. Titanic's lights flickered and went out. The ship split in half. The front half quickly sank.
the stern remained above the surface for a moment. Then Titanic slipped into the ocean. Keep rowing away from the ship! The great ship was gone. In the darkness, people clung to wreckage and floated in the freezing water. Survivors in lifeboats heard their cries for help. Someone help us! It's so cold. In one lifeboat, Molly Brown argued with the officer in charge of the boat. We have to go back. We have more room. No, we can't. They'll swamp the boat and kill us all. There's nothing we can do. Finally, about two hours after Titanic sank, the Carpathia reached the scene. Survivors in lifeboats rowed to meet the ship. Aboard the Carpathia, Captain Rostron was saddened. We're too late. Get to the lifeboats. Save everyone you can. Survivors climbed rope ladders to the Carpathia. The crew did what it could to comfort them. It'll be all right. The Carpathia carried only 705 survivors to New York City. Thousands of people met the ship as it docked, searching for friends or family members. Most learned the worst. More than 1,500 people died in the cold waters of the North Atlantic. The sinking of Titanic was one of the most deadly disasters of its time. Mm -hmm.